a few less people here. Tell them to just take a boat right on out there and enjoy themselves. Hallelujah. Amen. God bless you. I, Lila Chahoon has been, I got to know Lila back in the beginning of revival. She and her husband, Bob, came here just right after revival started. And I cannot tell you how much, she doesn't even realize, I don't think, how much she has been uh, just imparted into my life. Her and Bob have been imparted into Amber and I, our lives, our ministry. Because quite frankly, uh, as I said earlier, when, when I was a boy, we had intercession and travail. But we didn't really call people an intercessor. And then when that all came along, you know, anytime something happens in the body of Christ, the good stuff comes. God does a divine work, but then, you know, the river also carries some d debris along with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> when the river comes out of its bank, it always sweeps over the land and it, all the trash floats on the top. And I can't tell you how many fires, Lila, that we had to put out in the beginning of revival from supposed intercessors and it gave pastors as bad a taste with intercessory prayer as it did with musicians I had pastors say could I get a musician who really isn't a musician <laughs> my own father in his church he had a problem with a couple ladies rising up and they were intercessory prayer people supposedly and they weren't really they were just troublemakers, but they were, God was telling them stuff and he wasn't hearing from God and all that business. And Lila came to Brownsville on the crest of this revival and she brought a balance to us. And this is a solid woman when it comes to understanding of what intercessory prayer is, but also if you go, if you are ever privileged to be a part of our intercessory prayer, which you will be tomorrow during a session, you'll understand that there's a very definite protocol. It's not just nutty bedlam back there. It gets fun, but when it comes to prophetic words or things the Lord is saying, they've got a definite order they flow with. And, and that's the thing that I appreciate about her because just as with anything that happens in the church or with revival or with anything that God is doing, there needs to be pastoring over it. If there's not a pastoral guide over it and there's not a parameter set, then what can happen is what God intended to come in and make a change can create a lot of confusion. And I appreciate Lila because she helped me. Lila, the Lord used you to redeem intercessors to me because of all the things. No, I've never told you that, but I would get on the phone. My home church, one of my one of my churches back back in Nashville that I was a part of, I was getting calls. You know, we've got a group of women that have got the word of the Lord for us. They're giving us havoc. Is that what y'all do at Brownsville? And I was saying, no, that's not at all what we do. And when Lila and Bob came, they just put that in order. And God is using Lila mightily around the, around the earth. And she just travels nation and nation and all over the place. And her and her husband are powerful in prayer. She has a ministry called Cross Pollinization. And, and you're going to be blessed by what she has to say because she opens up, she opens up my mind and lets me explore some territories that normally I don't go, I don't go there usually. And I'm so excited that she's here with us today. And I'm so glad that she's a part of this conference. So would you just make her welcome right now? Ms. Lila Tahoe. Here she is. God's woman for the hour, Lila Teryoon. Well, he's slick, isn't he? I mean, he has a tongue of a... Yeah. Silver-tongued orator. Yeah, that's what we call it. Praise the Lord. Well, it's good to be in the house of God today. It's good to be in his house. And it's good to have him in this house. Amen. Because when God's in the house, anything can happen. And let's just expect anything to happen. We've already had such an introduction by his presence of beginning last night. I tell you, it has not been hard to transition into, uh, 
into what God wants because truthfully intercessors and, and worship people are usually the hardest ones to get up off the seat. <laughs> Hello? Now you usually have to soften them up for a couple of days before you can really begin to move. But my heart tells me that this is a hungry, hungry people. Hungry after God. And I just want to make this declaration at the get-go because we're going to have briefly some music as an introduction. Uh, and that is that uh, you have not come here accidentally. You have not come here because, just because someone invited you or because you saw a brochure that looked like it was going to be a, kind of an interesting conference. You didn't come here for the Pensacola beaches. You came here under a divine appointment. God has brought you to this house, and you're not going to leave this place the same. He's already begun a powerful, deep work this morning. I just was uh, watching the response of the different people. He's doing a tremendous work. He's going to clean our houses out. Amen? Amen. There's some rivers here that have been clogged up, and the water's going to begin to flow. Out of the belly shall flow rivers of living water. Yes, and so living water is going to begin to flow. Maybe your wells have been a little stagnant. And God's going to clean the debris out. And he's going to bring forth rivers of life. And so uh, as, as uh, Jesse comes, we're going to begin to, um, because we're going to talk about the river today. I think it's an appropriate subject. And I think if it doesn't stop raining out there, we just may be <laughs> in the midst of one. It looks like all across Texas and Louisiana and some of those places that... Um, They've gotten rain uh, 36 inches, uh, I think it was in Texas. So the uh, waters are running over the banks all over this area. Oh, could it be prophetic? Oh, perhaps it could. Go ahead. There's a river. Hallelujah. Let's just change position for a moment because um, I've got a lot to, to lay on you today, and I want you to be you know, ready to receive. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just stand and begin to worship him. Mm -hmm. Little technical difficulty. Hold on. And we know 
Father, we ask you to open the eyes of our understanding, enlighten our sight, Lord, give us larger vision. Yes, give us kingdom mentality, oh God. Lord, I ask for seer's eyes, eyes of an eagle, eyes of eagle's eyes, of eagles, eagle's eyes to your people, oh Lord. Yes, cause us to sit in heavenly places with you. Lord, that we may see and comprehend and understand from your perspective. Lord, take us beyond ourselves and the place that we've been, Lord. Give us wings to fly. Oh, that I had wings and I could fly. Yes, but you've said that you've given us wings of eagles. And so, Lord, open our ears to hear what the Spirit is speaking in this hour and this day. Lord, let us understand your purposes. Lord, I ask that our hearts, even as you are tenderizing them, even as you are plowing our hearts, even in these last few sessions, oh God, let our hearts be fertile ground for the planting of the seed of your word, that it might bring forth the intended harvest, so that from this place, oh God, your seeds will be cast to the nations. Yes, the seeds of worship, the seeds of intercession. Oh God, the seeds of passion and love, oh Lord, will be cast forth to the nations. And Lord, we thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. There is a river. There is a river. Thank you. Praise God. In Habakkuk 2 and 14, it says, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And there's another scripture that says that the earth will be filled with the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. But this particular one in Habakkuk 2 and 14 says, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. And it's very important for the knowledge of the glory to begin to grip us and begin to take hold in our life. Everything to do with the present move of God, which has been in the last decade or, 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 or decade and a half, has to do with either, it seems like, fire or water. Both are powerful, powerful uh, metaphors of what God's presence and spirit is doing. God spoke something very powerfully to me just uh, last week when we were up in Detroit. And the Lord said that this is the time of the exchanging of breath. This is a time of the exchanging of breath. That God is beginning to breathe powerfully over his church. And it's going to have an astounding and amazing response. When he breathed upon man, when he was nothing but, uh, but just dust, amen, and God breathed into him and made him an animate being with the capability and the potential of breathing back to God, thanks and worship and praise. That's what we've been created for, beloved, is worshipers. We are worshipers, and we have been given the potential by the breath of God to breathe back to him. And in the exchanging of breath, there's going to be some awesome things that are going to occur. We know that, in fact, it's interesting that my pastor's doing a, a subject. How many of you were here Sunday morning? And we haven't, we haven't discussed this or conversed about this at all, but he's talking about Jesus giving a token when he breathed upon the apostles in the Gospel of John. And then we saw that the Lord brought the, the wind of the Holy Spirit on Pentecost morning. Now, we've just gone past the Pentecost celebration, or the 50th, the 50th day after Passover. 
I think that was a couple of weeks ago. And for those of us that are of the Pentecostal persuasion, we know that something awesome happened at that time because we uh, have, have experienced and we have sought after and desired and tried to move in to what God did at that time because he said the promises to you, to your children, to your children's children, as many as the Lord our God shall call. But that was just the predecessor of the wind of God's spirit that's going to blow all across the nations. Amen? He has promised that the latter house will be greater than the former house. He has promised to this end time uh, generation that there is going to be a deluge not only of the river but of his presence and of the fire and, and of the wind that is going to cause the church to not only awaken that she's going to stand up and she's going to be glorious in this day. And we're going to see exploits, great powerful exploits. Uh, if you thought healing the sick by your shadow passing over it in, in, the, in the Pentecostal experience what, is something because the, we, we still marvel over that and, and none of us are having that happen, leastwise I should, that was kind of presumptuous, maybe some of you are, but it certainly hasn't happened to me yet where my shadow has healed the sick, but I'm looking for that. But I'm looking for more than that because this is the, oh, when he stood up on that day, that great day, Remember in, in uh, John, I think it's the seventh chapter, Jesus stood up and made the proclamation on that great day, that great feast day. And he said, out of your bellies, out of your heart shall flow rivers of living water. And he spoke concerning the Holy Spirit. That was not the feast of Pentecost. That was the feast of tabernacles or in gatherings, the feast that's going to be celebrated at the end of the age. Amen? And so we have an appointment and a destiny with some powerful, powerful, cataclysmic, uh, cataclysmic um, uh, 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 heavens touching earth, creating all kinds of fantastic things. Amen? And so I want to encourage us today that there is a river flowing. And I want to talk specifically because the river is the term that we use here at Brownsville because on Father's Day 1995, the river came in to our church and changed everything. But I want to say that it was only ankle deep because our pastor's feet flipped over on the sides, amen, and it was so powerful it was able to carry people and in, into the move of God in this place by the thousands and hundreds of thousands. But that was ankle deep. Now we've been trying to wade out into deeper waters. And so let's look at Ezekiel because there's a correlation between the glory and the river. The earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In Ezekiel 47, verse 1 through 9, it says, Then he brought me to the back of the temple, and there was water flowing under the threshold of the temple toward the east. For the front of the temple faced east, and the water was flowing from under the right side of the temple, south of the altar. He brought me out by way of the north gate and led me around to the outside to the outer gate that pass passes faces east, and there was water running on the right side. And when the man went out to the east with the line in his hand, he measured 1,000 cubits, and he brought me through the waters, and the water came up to my ankles. It's a point. The water came up to my ankles. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the waters, and the water came up to my knees. Again, he measured 1,000 and brought me through the water, and the water came up to my waist. Again, he measured 1,000, and it was a river that I could not cross. For the water was too deep, water in which one must swim, a river that could not be crossed. He said to me, Son of man, have you seen this? Then he brought me and returned me to the bank of the river. And when I returned there along the bank of the river were very many trees on one side and the other. And then he said to me, This water flows toward the eastern region, goes down into the valley and enters the sea. And when it reaches the sea, its waters are healed. And it shall be that every living thing that moves wherever the river goes will live. There will be a very great multitude of fish because these waters go there. For they will be healed and everything, everything will live wherever the river goes. And so we see a, a tremendous metaphor here by the prophet Ezekiel. And I believe that we're beginning to live it out in our generation and our time. Now, I want to clarify something here because some of you probably are questioning why are we doing intercession and worship together? Because everyone is a worshiper and everyone is an intercessor. Amen? It's not relegated or delegated to some select elect few. 
It has not to do with your talent and both of them that can be developed in you. It's up to you. Amen. So tomorrow afternoon when we, when we have the breakout session with the intercessors, we're going to, be, to talk, be talking to you briefly, but we're also going to just be moving into intercession the way that we have it here at Brownsville. And so you'll see that what God has done in this house, um, hopefully, you know, we, we are not saying clone or, or, or try to duplicate or anything like that, but we're hoping it's better caught than taught. Okay? Praise God. So some of the worship leaders out there, and I saw that there are lots of musicians and singers and so on, uh, you're saying, uh, what are you talking about? Am I an intercessor? Absolutely. And I prophesy, I prophesy that you will find as you lead people into worship, there will be more and more prayer that will be threaded through your time. You're not going to be speaking so much to the people as to encourage them to come into worship. You're going to begin to declare Amen. As the glory of God begins to move through you, as your heart is captured by God, and as you become not an entertainer, not uh, just someone up there to, to lead other people, but as you become the gateway to worship, amen, as your heart, out of the, out of the overflow of your heart, you begin to, to move into God's presence, you're, he's going to take you into areas where you're going to be able to declare prophetically things that will come to pass. Amen. And in that will be statements over your city. God will begin to, to move you into areas of prayer that you had not experienced before. He's going to, he is absolutely going to ruin us. Ha ha! I say, yes, Lord, ruin us. Ruin us for anything else. Amen. Ruin us for anything else. I want to share with you a personal experience, and I know we don't build doctrinally off a of personal experience, but, but I want to share this because it's so powerful and, and it made such a revelation uh, statement from God to my, from, from Him to me, that I hope that uh, you'll get on the same page with me. I was in 1996, early part of the, the revival, I was in Washington, D.C., with a very dear friend of mine who helped me understand the glory and the worship because the Lord spoke to me and he said the highest form of warfare is worship. The highest level of defeat to the enemy is the praise and the worship. It isn't just speaking in tongues and stomping and, and you know, huffing and puffing at the devil. He said, if you get into my throne room, I, I shared that with you last night, then you have the ear of the king. Amen? And he's able to, to do anything because he is the great warrior. The battle belongs to him. He began to share with me that, that the, uh, Lucifer, who was the praise and worship leader, if we are interpreting the scriptures correctly, before his fall, because of great pride, he didn't fall over sexual immorality, he didn't fall over pornography. Ooh. It was the big P. And uh, it's something that we all struggle with, is it not? And so it's always something that, as far as worshipers and intercessors, that what we need to keep our mind in tune to is to take the low road at all times. Amen? Never believe your, believe your own press. You're never as good as everybody says you are. But you're never as bad as they say you are either. So we just need to keep our eyes focused on him because that's going to be a great snare. It always has been, always will be. And so when, if, if we are interpreting those scriptures correctly, it says that he was the anointed cherub that covers. And so when, when and he walked among the coals and the, and the stones of heaven and so on, we're talking about uh, the, the uh, scripture in Isaiah and also in Ezekiel. And so we, we pretty much agree that that was Lucifer and he was evidently the worship leader because it says that he had the timbrels and the pipes in him. Amen. So when he fell, it, it was, it, this just came to me a couple of days ago. When he fell, it's very interesting that the first, the first things that were created and constructed after the, the Cain was forced out of the garden, remember that? Or, or, or actually out of, uh, I guess he wasn't in the garden, but out of the vicinity of his family. They had, his mom and dad had already taken care of the other. But after Cain had, had slain his brother and he was driven into the land of Nod, and eventually, you know, we, we follow the genealogy. And part of his, um, his, his lineage, there's a man who has two wives. And these wives have children. One of them, uh, I think her name was Ada, and she had a, a son called Jubal. And it said he was the one who created 
the flute and the harp. So I believe that it is in the heart of the enemy to try to, to, it has always been in his heart because he knows how powerful the music and the worship is, to absolutely rob and to steal everything that God has provided. Because the reason that the enemy was able to duplicate through this, this descendant of Cain the, uh, the harp and the flute was because it was being replicated of something that he saw in the heavenlies that was so powerful that immediately upon, uh, upon the descent uh, of, the, of the seed of Cain, it was captured. But God is releasing and restoring all the sounds of the nation. Amen? Those, those instruments, the wind instruments, and, and so I remember one night the Lord was speaking to me about, about um, all night long. He kept saying, you need the sound of the flute in intercession. You need the sound of the flute in intercession over and over and over. And so now we have a flute player in our intercession. Uh, Steve is a part of our intercessory prayer team. And the sound is uh, because the wind instruments are the breath instruments. It's breathing back to God. Amen? It's, it's, it's not about our talent. It's not about talent. It's about heart. It's about relationship. So when we, uh, I was just with a, a tremendous saxophone player that said he had his personal epiphany, so to speak, in the cellar of his house. God transformed him from a musician into a worshiper by playing his instrument and God gripped him and I want to tell you the results of, of, the, of the sound that comes out of a worshiper the glory is in the music we've seen it here and the glory is in the music the glory is in the sound but it has to come out of a heart that's pure worship not performance that's quite a quite a challenge for us isn't it amen in 1996, when I was in Washington, D.C., and the friend of mine, Ruth, Ruth Heflin, she's gone on to be with the Lord now, but she wrote a book called Glory, which I would recommend to every intercessor and every worship leader. Anybody that has anything to do with, uh, with that part of the ministry in the church or wants to develop themselves in that part, I would, I would recommend the book Glory. She has quite a, uh, quite a few sequels to it, but that was one that really began to put me on the path of seeking the Lord in worship and praying through the worship, declaring through the worship and the dance and all of those things. It's a powerful book. So we were conducting a meeting in Washington, D.C., and we were kind of pitch hitting. She would preach and I would preach. And this one night I had preached first and then it, it came her time. And um, I was standing down in the, in the altar space area and the power of God, she had the ability because she had the revelation knowledge. You see, it says, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. There has to be a knowledge first. You see, the heart has to line up with the head. Mm -hmm. And the head needs to line up with the heart. Amen? They're, they're connected with each other. So as she was ministering, she used to be able to just go, la, la, do, 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 <laughs> whistle. And, you know, the glory of God had come in and people would just start falling under the power. And, you know, just awesome. And so in, as I was standing, I was drunker in a hoot owl. Is that okay to say that in here? I was drinking wine, you know not of. Okay. And so I'm, I'm standing down and I'm just kind of like, you know, weaving it along like that. And all of a sudden, she says, Lila, come on up here. I want, you, I want you to help me to pray for these people. And, you know, come on. And I'm going, no, 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 just let me stay down here. Well, we got about 500, 600 people there. And um, maybe more than that, I don't remember. It was, it was a full house. So she gets me up on the platform. And um, I'm standing behind, you know, over here. And I'm still weaving like this. And she just, wah, 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 boop, 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 like that. Never touched me. No catcher, no nothing. Boom. Down for the count. Okay, and I'm laying there on the floor, and I'm, oh, I'm in the river, oh, yes, oh, this is so awesome, oh, and I'm just splashing around, I'm just, metaphorically speaking, I mean, there was a river <laughs> on that platform, and I'm laying there, and I'm just enjoying all of this, you know, just, wow, this is so good, and oh, God, so refreshing, I'm so glad you sent the river to us, Lord, and uh, as I'm laying there, I hear she's getting ready to conclude, 
And so I think, okay, we've got a good friendship going here. Uh, you know, I probably better collect myself, get up off the floor, you know, to remain good friends. If she's got all those people to pray for, she's going to need some help. Okay. But I found out that I couldn't get up off the floor. I was sealed to the floor. Oh, oh, I'm trying as hard as I can, and I can't. In fact, I couldn't even open my eyes. So when I start trying to open my eyes, I could barely see between my lips. And what I discovered is I was under the water. Uh-oh, I'm laying in the river and I'm under the water. Well, now this changes things. Because immediately my natural mind slips in. I'm glad you guys are all, you know, <laughs> of this prophetic mind, you know. Uh, so you, totally nuts. Uh, perhaps. Just indulge me. Just indulge me. I just did a conference with Lou Ingalls and, and Jim Gall, and they, they preceded me. Any of you guys know who they are? Woo, 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 woo. And I, I got up and I said, you know what? Anything I say after this is going to seem so normal. <laughs> it's just going to seem like a piece of cake because these guys are, whoa, way out there. And I loved it. I mean, obviously they were, they were terrific, you know. They're, they're prophetic and intercessors and all that kind of stuff. But uh, it made me feel kind of good instead of being, you know, the one out there, woo, -hoo -hoo, and everybody's going, uh, I was just in the mainstream. <laughs> so I'm laying on the floor and I'm saying, God, what is this? I'm in the river, but I'm under the water. My natural mind goes, stay under the water, you're going to drown. I'm going to drown. Oh man, I got to get out of this. I got to get out from, I got to breathe. You're not going to be able to breathe if you're under the water. And so, you know, all of a sudden I had a revelation. Now, most people have a revelation of the spirit. They have a revelation. Not me. I had a revelation of the flesh. My flesh is saying, get up, get out of there. My spirit saying, I understood spiritually what he was saying to me. He was saying that I want you to die. I want you to die. And my soul and my spirit are saying, yes, Lord, yes. And my flesh was saying, I don't want to die. I want to live. 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 And so I got this tremendous conflict going. And my husband, who normally, now this is, he's supposed to be here. I, I guess he got detained somewhere, but he was supposed to. Normally, when we're in a meeting and I'm under the, you know, and it's time to go, he'll kick me and say, come on, Lila, get up off the floor. You're a very sensitive man. Very sensitive. It's time to go. And so he's hauling me out. It doesn't make any difference, you know, exactly where I am. You know, he doesn't have a whole lot of, um, oh, I better rethink that, Alvin. How does your family feel about you? No. <laughs> no, when he's ready to go, he's ready to go. The meeting's over. They're flashing the lights. Come on, let's go. If he has to carry me or drag me or whatever, that's okay. Oh, but where was he that night? I'm on the floor, so he's helping Ruth pray for everybody. And I'm laying there thinking, where are you when I need you? Come on, give me a kick and help me up off the floor. I can't get up off the floor by myself. Oh, no. No, not till everybody else has prayed for it. Well, anyway, I was very ashamed at that revelation because I thought I was farther down the road than that. Hello. Oh, I mean, I've taught the flesh always has to obey the mind. Well, we know we teach and we believe that the battle is over the mind, of course, casting down every evil imagination that exalts itself against God, you know, take dominion over your own flesh and all that. But I want to tell you there's a power... There's a power in your flesh. No wonder it's not going to be redeemed. It's going to have to be traded in. And I've already got my order for Cindy Crawford's body, okay? And so you just might as well forget anything. Yeah. The older we get, the more. Yes. The more gravity begins to take its toll. <laughs> I said that nice, didn't I? Hey, you guys are in the same, in the same shape, so. Anyway, I, I'm, 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 I'm really ashamed because I thought, oh, God, I thought I'd come farther than that. I left that place in a, in a mulligubs that night. Oh, oh, I'm feeling really bad. God, you're showing me what a, what a power there is in my flesh. So I had a revelation of the flesh. Well, I, I did rather 
grieve over that for a couple of years. Every time it would come to my mind, I'd feel really bad about it, you know, and, and I'd think, Lord, have I come any farther? So the Lord was gracious to me. How many of you know that he is so gracious? Once you've gotten the message, <laughs> once he's taking you to the woodshed, hello, okay, and have you noticed he doesn't take you to the woodshed when you're down low? No, it's always when you're on the mountaintop. And then you can, if, if he took you to the woodshed when you're low, I mean, it'd just kill you, right? And I had been flying high. I'd been flying in high places. So a couple of years later, I found myself in a, in a women's conference in Memphis, Tennessee. And uh, there were quite a few of us there, and I, I had the wonderful pleasure of being back underneath the river again. But this time, something had changed, and I, I so appreciate the Lord. Because this time, I wasn't struggling. This time, I wasn't fighting to live. This time, I was content to lay there. And I said, Jesus, show me. Show me a revelation of you. Show me something about you that I don't know. And he's many faceted every day. He could show us something brand new about himself. All of eternity will not be able to reveal the beauty of who he is. And so when I was laying there, he spoke to me and he said, hear the sound of many waters. Hear the sound of many waters. So my mind began to go to some different things that, uh, you know, different scriptures. And I remembered in uh, Revelation chapter 1 when John had that new revelation of Jesus. This is John the Beloved who cozied up to Jesus, you know, at, at the table and always had that intimate relationship. All of a sudden, in Revelation, Jesus appears to him as the one with the eyes of fire, the hair like wool. And it says that John fell at his feet and dead, as dead. I believe that the church has got some experiences like that we're going to enter into. Because the Lord is going to begin to return the fear of the Lord into the church. We've had a whole bunch of fear of the devil. But the fear of the Lord, which is the beginning of wisdom, actually the church might get smart after all. Oh, God, I can't believe it. You know, we're so stupid. We just, fought, we just uh, hook, line, and sink or swallow anything that comes along. But he says that the fear of the Lord is, going to be get the, is the beginning of wisdom. And so when, the, when he fell at, at the Lord's feet as dead, uh, and he gives a description of him in verse 14, it says, But his head and hair were, like, were white like wool, as white as snow and his eyes were like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice was the sound of many waters. So I began to lay there, and I thought, okay, Lord, your voice is the sound of many waters. Then he took me to Revelation 19, verse 5 and 6. Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you servants and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as the sound of many waters, and as the sound of mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord, God, omnipotent reigns. And I began to reflect, then God, you're saying that the people are also the sound of many waters that your people are also the sound of many waters. In Revelation 5, verse 8 through 10, all of these things are going through my spirit while I'm laying on the floor, and I am just getting so blessed because I know he's taking me down a new path for me. Now, when he had taken the scroll, it says in verse 8 of, of Revelation 5, when he had taken the scroll and the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having harps and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. If you're wondering how intercession and worship are connected together, the harps represent worship. The bowls represent intercession. They're married together. They're married together in heaven, so it needs to happen down here on earth. And they sang as it were, and they sang, not as it were, but the, as, they, as they sang a new song saying, you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to God by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us king, a kingdom of priests to our God, and we shall reign upon the earth. 
And as I lay there on the floor, the Lord began to, to deal with me even to a, di a deeper level than he had in 1996. Because in 1996, I realized that if I were to stay committed to the river, it was going to take my was going to take me to the death okay all right I'm not saying he was going to push me out in front of a car and I'm going to die but he was telling me that all the church has been enjoying the refreshing the splashing and pray for me and more Lord and all that but he said if you commit yourself to the river I'm going to bury you in it I'm going to bury you in it all of your ambitions are going to have to die all of your own personal uh, uh, bent on anything is going to have to die. You're going to have to embrace the cross. Amen? Taking up your cross daily and following after me. Oh, yes, if you are committed to the river, this is going to be your destiny. But as I lay there on the floor in 1998, he began to take me deeper in that. Yes, because I said yes in 1996. I said, God, though you slay me, yet shall I serve you? Now, I know that there's a, a whole group of, of uh, our, our Christian brothers and sisters that, you know, have, have some dispute with that scripture. But I tell you, I had been a few months before that incident in 1996 running around the intercession room going, he's killing the bride, he's killing the bride, he's killing the bride. I thought, Lord God, you have gone over the edge again. That's what he's doing. She's got to identify with him in every way. Now, I'm not saying she has to physically die. We're talking about dying. If we're going to be the compliment to the groom, hello, she has to identify with him in every way. Had a Judas kiss yet? If you haven't, get ready. That's a part of identifying. Amen? He received a Judas kiss, and it wasn't by, uh, by some stranger. It was somebody very close. And so when we have these experiences and we snivel and whine, let's just let our eyes lift higher and say, thank you, Jesus, that I'm able to identify with you. You're making me a bride that's going to be worthy of the groom. Hallelujah. I love this. We women have had to be the warriors and the sons of God and all. It's time, roll change time. Ha, ha, ha. We will dance on the streets that are gold. Gentlemen, do you hear me? Ha, you got to be the bride. I love it. I love it. I love it. Yeah. <laughs> when I was laying there and the Lord began to deal with me, he said, unless you are in the river, You'll never hear the sounds of the nation. You'll never hear the cries of the lost unless you have committed yourself to the river. It's not just your church. It's not just your family. It's not just your city. It's not just your state. But God is calling us to the nations. We are to be worshipers. We are to reproduce worshipers. I, I'm believing that there are those that are here today that are going to reproduce themselves in other nations. Others that are in this room today you may not be a missionary, but God's going to make you a missionary. He's going to begin to open doors, and you're going to begin to hear the sounds of many nations. Now, I'm going to have to spend quite a bit of time in this area because I think it's very important concerning sound. How are we going to hear the sound of other nations? How are we going to distinctively, are we going to hear uh, other languages spoken? No, I believe it's going to be the sound of the worship. God has placed a redemptive purpose and a redemptive sound in every nation of the world. Hello? They may not be using it for God's purpose right now, but he's going to redeem it. Everything is going to be redeemed. Hallelujah. This, this move of God, yes, this harvest that we're looking at now is not just about a little city or, or, or a state or a, or a church. We have to get kingdom mentality. 
Oh, he isn't just interested in, yes, of course, he's interested in, in the one-on-one, -on -one, but God has a burden and a heart for all of the nations. He's not willing that any should perish and neither should we be. Unless we are committed to the river, unless we have said, yes, God, I'm going to die to my purposes, he's never going to use us to our fullest potential. He may, may, may make you a superstar in your church or in your circles, but what is that in light of eternity? What is that in light of eternity? It means nothing. So as I was laying there, I was reflecting, a friend of mine, uh, uh, and I'm just believing for his total, his total restoration, and uh, a wonderful, awesome, prophetic worshiper. I remember speaking with him one day, and I was saying, how is it that you can produce music that can draw my intercessors into such tremendous depth of, 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 of relationship with the Lord and, and capture the hearts? And he said when he was a small boy, the Lord came to him, and, and, and he said, in children's terms would be like sprinkled me with with um, with a pixie dust okay we're talking Peter Pan hello this is from this is not an intercessor this is a worshiper okay uh, and this man is so prophetic that he has he has impacted the nations with his sound and he said from that point on when God touched him he could hear the sound of the music that God wanted him to reproduce amen and that's how he began reproducing the sounds of the nations. You see, God is sending a sound to the earth. Are you hearing me? I hope we're not too far out there. I got this from a musician, not an intercessor, though I think he's both. And he said he could hear the sounds, and to the best of his ability, he would try to reproduce the sound that he heard. And that's the reason that the music would have such glory because it didn't come out of him. It didn't come out of here. It came from the heavenlies and he was able to pull down. Now, interesting thing that has occurred in intercession, and I'm gonna just throw it out there, we don't normally talk about what happens in the back room that much, but uh, for the last couple of weeks, the Lord has been speaking to our prophetic intercessors and, and showing them notes, music notes, and they, through prayer have been pulling them down for this conference. Ha! So that the sounds of heaven will begin to invade this place and invade your life and invade your spirit. Amen? The sounds of the nation are very important and it's going to be reflected in the music that's going to be very progressive in the future. I believe it's going to be made up of all the different nations. And, and how I happened to discover this, everything I've learned has been blindly, stupidly stumbled over, because <laughs> I'm sure no, not smart. And uh, I, was, uh, I felt like our intercessors did not have a good enough burden or a strong enough burden for Israel. So I began to play Jewish music. The sound of the people in their worship. And so I went, are you here, Scott? Come on. When we began to play Jewish music, all of a sudden I noticed our intercessors began, you know, we began to dance the Hora and we began to, and, and, and the burden for Israel began to be translated into our prayer. Go ahead. Is that one on? Tell me that doesn't touch something deep in you. How? Oh, Jesus, right now we lift up Israel before you in all the conflict. Lord, you've said, oh God, to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. And so, Lord, corporately in this room today, Lord, as you have touched something deep in our spirit, God, let our prayers go toward that small nation that you have claimed as your own. Let our prayers go to that city that is named after you, oh God. Yes, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Oh, yes, Jesus, you hovered over it. And like a mother hen and you said, how oft I would have drawn you to myself and you would not. Oh, God, we 
we join our prayers with yours, Jesus, and we say, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how oft he would have drawn you unto himself, and oh, you would not, but Lord, let the veil come off of the eyes of your ancient covenant people, oh God, this day, and let them see, let them see, let them see, let them see, there are Yeshua HaMashiach, oh yes, yes, they're true, they're true Savior, oh God. Hallelujah. Reflected the sound of that nation. So I said, well, if it works with the Jewish nations. And so I began collecting music from all over the world. And I want to submit to you that there is a DNA of music in you that will respond to your roots. How many of you are, are, are from Irish, Irish, uh, yeah, Scotch, yeah. When Celtic music is played, ha ha, you want to dance, amen? There's a response in you. You may, have lost your, you may have lost your identity way back there, but there is a response. I was in Ireland last year during the time of the march. We were in Northern Ireland up in Belfast during the time of the of the marching of the orange men and you know all that and they had the roads blocked and and all kinds of things and they're they're having the descent isn't that pitiful it's a religious thing but supposedly but uh, we know that it has to do with demonic spirits but it's supposed to be catholic against uh, protestant and all that so we were in this church and uh during the time when they were having the these uh, marches and we were upstairs and we had hardwood floors and you have never seen anybody dance like the, like the Irish can dance. They got their budron drum out, and they began to play, and we began to dance. They about killed this old woman. I want to tell you, and there were, old, there were ladies older than me. I have never, but it was something about that sound. And we were making a statement there in that church. Yes, that the powers of darkness were going to be under the feet. <laughs> and so we were marching in that room spiritually, vicariously, up and down. Oh, yes, that highway that was all blocked off and all of this, this uh, 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 terrible violence was going on. But we were taking the land. Oh, with the dance of the Celts. Amen. Hallelujah. You will hear the sound of the nations when you're in the river. Otherwise, you'll just play music as usual. And it's not about playing music. It's about duplicating the sounds. Now I run into, when I, when I minister things like this, say in South Africa and you know, some of the um, uh, more sensitive countries, and we talk about the African sound, which is the sound of the African drum that needs to be played. Amen? It needs to be played. I had made a statement similar to, to what I had just spoken about, that I, I saw a vineyard um, worship team on the, on the platform, and my challenge to the congregation, and it was made up of Afrikaans, and, and there were some, there were some uh, black, uh, black Africans there, in fact, a group that came from the Congo. And there were some Zulus, and, and uh, there were some British people, and it was quite a, quite a mix, but it was predominantly Anglo. And I, may, I had made the statement that the, the sound of the, I, I had heard Martin Smith, yeah. I had heard Hillsong, so Australia was there, England was there, we, we heard Lyndall Cooley, America was there, amen. But I said, where is the sound of Africa? Where is the sound of Africa? And with that, the entire group that had come from the Congo stood up and they went, Aah! and they danced up to the platform. And they gave me their drum. Here it is right here. We're going to play this tonight, probably, or tomorrow night. They gave me their drum. And from that point on, that drum sat next to the, to the vineyard worship team. And we had church. One of the ladies that had challenged me when I had a question and answer session said, you mean we're supposed to allow our African people
to play on an instrument that they have summoned demons with? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. This face of horror. That's when they, that's when they jumped up and, and brought me the drum, the uh, African ladies. Because I said, when the person is redeemed, the musical instrument is redeemed. <clears throat> this drum, this drum doesn't know <laughs> what it's done. <laughs> I mean, it's just wood and skin. Amen? Translating that to the First Nations people of America. Hello. Well, let that one settle in for a minute. Oh, it's easy for us to talk about letting the Celtic people of Ireland and, and Scotland and so on get in touch with their music and their sound. Oh, it's easy for us to say, yes, let those Africans play their drums. But what does it say to us in America concerning our own First Nations people? We did a conference in February called Bridging the Americas, which had a strong emphasis on all of the rivers that are flowing. Amen. Toronto River, Argentina River, Brownsville River, all the rivers that are flowing for the sake of the continent, for the sake from Alaska to Argentina, full out revival. Amen. It's going to take a reconciliation for our First Nations people, because they are the stewards of this land. Amen? And so, we're, we're very delighted to have some from the Crow Nation here today. Amen? Praise God. And I think we have some music. Amen? I tell I love it when they, when they dance with their feathers and leather and all that. Isn't that, isn't that cool? Yeah? God is returning to all of the nations the dignity of the people that he has created them to be. He's placed his image on every single man, woman, and child worldwide. And this is the time when he's collecting the breath. That's why there's such an outpouring of his Holy Spirit worldwide. Oh, he's going to return his original redemptive purpose to the Iranian countries. He's going to return his redemptive purposes to East Indian countries. He's going to return his redemptive purposes to the islands. He's going to return, and all the indigenous people are going to begin to rise up. Ha, ha, ha. Why do we have to wait till we get to heaven? Why can't it start right here on earth? Amen. And every tribe and every nation and every tongue shall be standing there with their awesome worship and their awesome demonstration. God is not a white God sitting on a white, white throne with a white Holy Ghost and a white sun. Amen? He's comprised of all nations and all people. And it takes all the nations of the world and all the people of the world to reflect Him. And it takes their sound. Come on. Praise the Lord. We have an Indian drum. Got the drum? Do you... Do you ladies know how to play the drum? Any of you? Do any of you? Would you? Yeah. Amen. It's one of your sisters here. Come on. We want you up here by the flute. The sound of the flute. The sound of the flute. It's your time. God's doing something prophetic here. It's going to affect your tribe. It's going to affect the tribes of the... Amen. Yes, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. There's another one here.
praise God. I want you to stay here, ladies. Scott, I want you to run around here. This is one of our intercessors. And um, at a worship and worship conference a couple of years ago, the Lord touched her mightily. And I want, to, I want the other ladies to come here for just a moment. This is a Karos time. This is one of those unplanned moments that God just put together. Amen. Hallelujah. I want you to share what happened, Reggie. Two years ago, I'm Shoshone, and my reservation is in California, in San Diego. And two years ago, Lila sent me to a, a conference in Kansas City. And I had been raised with the dance. My mother had taken me to the, our reservation, and I had learned the dance and the ways of my people. But all of a sudden, when I was 10, I, we went to a Catherine Coleman service. And I was saved. But when I got saved, I was no longer allowed to be Native anymore. All of that was taken from me. I went through several years. I went to Oral Roberts University. And my nativeness laid dormant within me until two years ago when Lila sent me to a conference in Kansas City. And Richard Twist was there. And Mary Glazier was there. And these are Native people, for those of you that don't know, these are Native representatives in, in a, the Christian realm from the Native people. And when I went there, my life changed drastically. All of a sudden, I saw my people dressed in their regalia. And the red on the regalia represented the blood of Jesus. You see, they weren't into the mysticism and the witchcraft, and I'd never seen that before. And they would dance and they would have beaded, uh, a cross beaded on their regalia. And I, and I was in such awe that I cried and I cried and I cried. But all of a sudden, something started waking up in me. They had four sets of drums. And one of them, we got one for Lila. It's the drums are 12, were 12 sided representing the 12 tribes of Israel. And I walked up to these drums, and I'll never forget this. I walked up to the drums, and my knees began to shake. And, I, and, and But I was in my mind, I was thinking, but Lord, this is, how can this be? I'd never seen this before. And I picked up one of the drums, and I began to play just as they began to play. And the presence of God washed through me, and all of a sudden, my native DNA woke up. I began instantly to see visions. I began to feel the presence of God in a new way that I'd never felt before. I had been in revival for three years at Brownsville, and my life had changed drastically. The Lord had taken out so much of me. He cleaned me up, then he sent me to that conference, and all of a sudden my native DNA woke up, and I have just, I've never been the same since then. We need to pray for these ladies. Come on. I want you to come, my Father. When we first came to Brownsville, the Lord spoke to me, because obviously in our particular area of the United States, there's a lot of racial strife where there is in every state. But uh, one, of the, um, one of the things that the Lord spoke to me, he said, before the black-white issue can be settled, the First Nations issue has to be settled. Amen. And so I want us corporately to stand. We're not quite finished with the message, but we might be. Who knows? I just feel the presence of God here, and I just, I just ask, please, as a representative of the Anglo community, please forgive us. I know you've probably heard this many, many times, but I know that the time is here for the nations to be wedded together. We need you desperately, not just your forgiveness because of the blood shedding, the bloodletting, but we honor you, we honor your giftings, we honor your music. We honor your dance. Oh, God, release the men in the dance to teach our men how to be warriors and dance. We honor 
your giftings. We honor your prophetic anointing. We honor the mantle, yes, the apostolic mantle that is upon the First Nations people, that you're going to go to the nations of the world and that you are going to deposit something in the other nations of the world. I just got, I just got something from England. I got a prophetic word from England, and they said that England will be changed because of the way that God moves in America concerning the First Nations people because they were the ones from England that sent over here, amen, and, and brought such oppression to the First Nations people. So I want us to corporately spread our, our hands toward our sisters and bless them as the, oh, as the honorable, honorable people that they are. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for the stewards of this land. I thank you, Lord, that they have, oh God, the key to revival for the entire hemisphere. Lord, I thank you for the restoration of the dignity of the First Nations. Oh God, every tribe, every tongue, every nation. Oh God, we honor them today. Lord, we ask that they will be put and placed where you have intended for them to be, even at the head of the movement of God in America. Oh Lord, the head and not the tail. God, I just ask that every curse that's been sent oh, by word of, 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 of uh, criticism, by word of, of disdain, be broken because we speak blessings, blessings, blessings upon this crow nation as they represent all of the nation, oh, the First Nations people of America. Oh, God, raise them up. Raise them up. Let the sounds of glory begin to rise on every First Nations reservation all across America, Mexico, South America, Canada, Alaska, Central America. Oh, God, let the sounds resound. Let the sounds resound. Let the sounds resound. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You want to say anything, Reggie? Praise God. I don't know what expectations you came here with. Would you like to say anything? Any of you like to say something? Well, our, uh, elders of the Crow Nation, many were touched when one went to Azusa and came back with that fire and, and many didn't go as the sister said to go and, and uh, you know, seek the great spirit. Instead they, they went, they went and they fasted and they prayed in the mountains but they sought the Lord and they went and they sought the Lord and at that time they, the Lord would give them songs and the, back then the, the Crow Nation and every song were scriptures and we would like to sing a song oh, yeah. song um, I, I come from a traditional family and you know my grandparents they're into the tradition and you know as she was talking that's the same way with me where um like let go of everything my regalia my my outfit and all and um to give up all that and and um and as i she asked us to play the drum and i was like you know only the men play the drums at home and that and as i begin and as I began to just play the drum and the presence of God just came on me and then I just began to just see my, my crow people. I just began to just, I don't know, I just 
begin to see the nation and I just felt the spirit of God just coming on me as I began to play that drum and the peace just came over me and I was like I didn't want to stop to playing that drum. I put them before you to stay, Lord. Dealing, Lord, in the fire, leash, bogging upon the people that they will be set free, Lord. About it, dealing, you do the work, Lord. Stay at home, Agnawabish. We stand in the gap for them, Lord, in Jesus' name. But you got in Wabish, Gagua, the Lakbaja, Gagua's Chuan, the Kaski Gagua, the Lakbakbish, Gagua, Salogish, Gagua, Salogish, the Lakbakbish, Gagua, what you are, Gagua, Paris of Bassau, Gagua, Gagua, Lushita, Bush, 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 This is so overwhelming. <laughs> this is an experience. Praise God. We, we need more mics. I'm sorry. Oh, Do we have a tambourine? Okay. within themselves and um, when they begin to go up to the mountains and they begin to fast and seek God and wanted to know more of what they had, what they had received within them, you know, God began to give them songs and the songs that he gave them uh, later on um, come to find out they were scriptures. They did not read, but God ministered to them through songs that were scriptures. And the song that, the, the song that um, uh, we, we'll be singing would be a, a scripture from the word too.
Holy Spirit, you may not, you don't see it, but you believe it. And, and all things will happen when you believe it. The Holy Ghost. Amen. God, you do all things well. You do all things well. Amen. I did not know that the Crow Nation had been touched with the Azusa Street fire. But one of the things that I am declaring, and I'm, uh, how many, anybody here from California? Oh, I heard a woo. Fresno. Okay, anybody else from California? Amen. Where from? Orange County, San Diego. Okay, Central and way south. What I am declaring, and I have made uh, it a point, uh, I, I, I've told the Lord wherever I go, I'm going to begin to declare for California. Amen. Especially for Los Angeles area, because that's the mother of the present Pentecostal re uh, experience, the present Pentecostal revival. And as the Lord had the Jewish people always look toward uh, Israel, or Jerusalem and pray because that was the mother of, of everything that God was doing at that time, I believe that the Lord wants us to stop cursing California. He said that in Dr. Cho's prophetic word, when, when the, the river or the fire of God hits, uh, hits uh, California, it's going to sweep back across America and the whole nation is going to be on fire with God. So we need to begin to speak blessings to counteract the curses because most of the curses that have been spoken against California, especially Hollywood, has been from the church. Amen. And so we just need to erase those word curses. Amen. And we need to bless them as the mother of our Pentecostal churches. Amen. Praise God. If you'll sit with me just one more moment, I want to make one more point and then we're going to try to conclude. I don't even know what time it is. Do we care? Okay, that's good. That's what we want to hear. In the river, in the river you will hear the sounds of the nations. Did the Lord jerk anybody to the bottom of the river today? Yeah. We need to stay there until we hear fully what God is speaking in this hour. In Revelation 22, verse 1 through 3, and this is so strong in the, in the, script, or the uh, song that we sang this morning. This was something else that the Lord showed me when I was in the river, 1998. He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne and the Lamb. The river is coming from the crucified life. The river is coming from the Lamb. The river is Jesus. Amen. The crucified life. In the middle of the street and on, other, on either side of the river was the tree of life which bore 12 fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month and the leaves of the trees were for the healing of the nations. I believe we have not even begun to see what God is going to do when the glory comes in through the un, unrestrained, unashamed, unabandoned worship as we lift it up to Him. I believe that the glory will come in for healing I've seen in this last year a couple of really um, tremendous miracles, I guess you could call them, or great healings, uh, with no one laying hands particularly on anyone, but because the glory of God came in. I was in a meeting in Mexico, and the glory of God came in through the worship, and there were many healings, but specifically there was a blind woman that received her sight that night. Many others received an improvement, but this was a totally blind woman just last week. Uh, uh, I saw a young boy who had been in a wheelchair for uh, two years, uh, not only get up and walk, but run. And it was during the glory, when the glory of God, your, your brother was playing the music and the glory of God came in on sweet mercies. I could have told you when it turned on a dime. And so I sense that same spirit in here this morning, that same. And so if you are seeking the Lord for a healing, don't wait for somebody to lay hands on you. Just reach out. He's got, he's got uh, arms. He's got new hearts. Yeah. When heaven comes.
comes close and kisses the earth, anything is possible. So just reach into that realm and apprehend what you, what you need. I was in, in Los Angeles about, four, about three weeks ago, and I went to Angeles Temple. And uh, those of you that are from, not from California, perhaps you're not familiar with the ministry of Amy Simple McPherson. She built uh, Angela's Temple uh, as a, what you would call pretty much a Generation X, or she was before, before she was 30 years old as a, as a single mother with two small children. Uh, she had a mandate from God. When she hit California, she had a tent meeting, or tent that she was bringing from, she brought from Canada. And as she came across the United States, the, the Lord was using her at her, and when she, came to California, she built Angela's Temple back in the 20s, and it was a, a, it cost a million dollars and it was debt free when she got it finished in one year. And God moved into that place, and she was basically an evangelist, souls were her, were her main focus. But what began to happen because she was a worshiper, is healings began to take place. Healings all over the place. In fact, they took me up to, and I saw the, the, the crutches and the, the braces and some of the things, some of the, a few of the things that they have, have kept. And so as, I, as we were being guided through the old Angelus Temple and I was speaking with the lady that was, was taking us around and she began to talk about, now they're reconstructing it and they're renewing it and they're re, you know, redoing it and it's not going to look the same, unfortunately because I love the old way. They, they strongly embraced the charismatic movement in the 60s, and I used to go to Angela's Temple often. But the, uh, my, our guide was, was giving the information concerning how the, the building, it, it seated 5,000 people without any microphones. And she was a great worshiper. She wrote a lot of songs and music, and they said it was really something. She had a full brass band on one side. She had all the stringed instruments, all of the musical instruments were, and choirs all over the place. And they said when they would begin to worship, when they would begin to, to sing, it was like the roof was taken off of the top of the building. And I said, that's it. That's why the healings began to come, because of the worship. And so I think we need to be open to that. I think we need to see that God is doing something. And I want to conclude with this thought. I just received from Joseph Garlington a, a, um, an email a couple of days ago. And how many of you have read my book called Cross Pollination? Amen. Which has to do with the, the river here in Brownsville being directly related to the river that's been flowing in Argentina for quite some years. Okay? I believe that all of the rivers are connected and they're going to come together. Oh, God. And we have not seen anything as we all lay down our denominational thing and let all the tributaries and the rivers begin to flow together in unity. Oh, the whole earth will be filled with this glory as the waters cover the sea. And so I received this from him, and I called him immediately after I got the, uh, the email. And he was, he was telling me, this was on June 5th, because here's what, the, here's what the prophetic word said. He passed this on to me, someone by the name of Carolyn Wise. Evidently, she's someone that they know, and um, in fact, he said she's very accurate prophetically. And uh, said that the Lord told me in January that he was brooding over June. He's brooding over June. She said she'd been praying about that with little understanding, realizing it had something to do with the revival of healing, the miraculous deliverance. And it goes on to say, I felt the Lord say that he was causing the anointing mantles, callings, and destinies of those men and women of the 50s to surface in June. There were men and women of great power in the 50s, but many of their giftings and anointings and mantles were either forfeited, unreproduced, or died with them. And the Lord is searching the earth for regions, churches, and individuals who will prepare their hearts with holiness and passionate desire to receive the resurrection of these things again this year. And specifically, I saw this healing in Detroit on June 2nd. It was the first time I had seen that type of thing ha exactly like that. And I want to tell you that this is, for those of you that have read my book, Cross Pollination, June 5th was the 50th anniversary for the great outpouring in Argentina. 
back in 1951 with Tommy Hicks when three million people came to those meetings and hundreds and thousands of them were, were saved. Now, Tommy Hicks was a, an evangelist. He was one of the healing, the 50s, 1950s healing evangelist who went down there with the mandate from God. And it was so interesting to me when I came back from that meeting and, and I picked up in Detroit and I picked up this email and I said to Joe Garland, and guess who is at our church Thursday and Friday night? Claudio Fredazone from Argentina. God's up to something. He's setting us up, folks. He's setting us up for some big stuff. And I believe that you and I need to be very aware when we feel the glory of God. Let's not just take the people into a feely good. Let's not just take the people into, you know, tickles and tears. Let's take it the max. Let's just keep worshiping the Lord because it's not about us. It's about him and everything we need, he's got. Amen. And he wants, he wants to lavish upon his church. But there are Kairos moments. And so I'm expecting God to move in the miraculous this week. Amen? He's brooding over June, and this is June. Amen. Stand with me, please. Hallelujah. I wonder if we could begin to play Find Me in the River, because some of you may be dry. Hallelujah. How many of you are willing to commit yourself to dying in the river? Oh, God. Staying there. Amen. Embracing his cross. Hallelujah. I believe you. I believe that God's moving upon your heart and my heart today. Amen. Linda. Mike is going to close this session with his song. I don't know, I'm not going to suppose to know what the Lord wants to do the next day or so, but just to let you in on a little secret, Brownsville is ready, our church is ready, we've been ruined, God came and ruined our church, he ruined those of us in the ministry, John Kilpatrick and I talk frequently and I look at him and I go, Pastor, I don't want to be a music director. He said, you know, I don't really want to be a pastor. And we kind of look at each other and go, well, what are we going to do? <laughs> it's just not exciting to come up with another average sermon or another average choir song or another good worship chorus. I don't know about you, but that stuff right now is leaving me cold. And I gotta tell you, it's a good time for God to come upon us. All I care about is what we did this morning. That's all I care about. And if you've come to this conference and that's not what you want, I apologize to you. And, and if we can refund your money or something, we'll do it. Bless your heart. You. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't mean that. I didn't mean that. Yes. Just get ready because I know God wants to do something because I have never had such a battle in my life. So you're here at the right time. Now, Lila feels like that protocol tells me that protocol is that we honor the First Nations people. So.
So we're gonna give them a gift. Um, wait a minute. Now, this is like a birthday party and you forgot to bring a present. Mine's all out on the table. <laughs> See, you got to do yours in front of everybody, so I'll just have to do mine like the Bible says behind doors. And... <laughs> I can ruin a moment, can't I? Come on, sing for us. And then when we're finished with this, if you want to stay around and worship the Lord this afternoon and just stay here and fast all day, that's all right with us because we're, we're, we're here today because in this week we want to see God touch you and we want to see what he wants to do. Bless you. I'm going to go get my gift so I can give. Find me in the river. Find me on my knees I've walked against the water Now I'm waiting if you please I've long to see the roses Never felt the thorns, and we bought our pretty crowns, but we never paid the price. to do this in front of people with First Nations of people. So I want you four ladies to come up here and mine is better than hers. So I just want you to, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Y'all get back in the spirit. Man, it's supposed to be a serious song. Find me in the river. Find me on my Walked against the water. Now I'm waiting if you please. We didn't count on suffering. We didn't count on pain. No, no. But if the blessings in the valley
So find me in the river. Find so one more time. me there. Find me on my knees with my soul not dismissing you we're just saying take this presence with you and tonight at seven o'clock we're coming back Mike Motley and Jesse Rogers will be leading us in worship I'll just be laying in the floor I'm telling you you don't understand I need this I need this so much and I think you all are wonderful there's a wonderful freedom here the Lord bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you. Get a little rest, get some food, and let's come back at 7 ready to go, okay? All right, bless you.